Welcome back to Life Between the Trees. Just got a day out on my own today. Um, couldn't find any mates to go riding with today, which is fine. They've all got stuff to do. I've just come back off my mining roster. So, um, yeah, just thought I'd uh, chuck together a quick video about minimising the risks when you're riding by yourself and still enjoying your day. So, I don't uh, attack things that are likely to be huge risk. Uh, but might sound you know very simple and easy to do but um, we get a bit carried away sometime I'll just move this uh, vine out of the way off the track yes yeah, so as I was saying I don't uh, typically go for high risk stuff on my own um, another thing you could do is uh, carry a personal locator beacon um, in case things do go wrong, we've had, not riding as individuals, but we've had rides before where the guys have been hurt and um, unfortunately had to get a helicopter out uh, on two occasions, take injured riders away, so, and on another occasion a, a uh, ambulance four-wheel drive, so um, it does happen. Don't be that guy that's stuck out with your bike on your own. Um, or girl, obviously. But, um, yeah, you can see the country here is quite steep and this isn't hugely challenging, but it, you know, the slippery routes, it can all go wrong very quickly. And uh, the last thing you want to do is be stuck here by yourself when quick action could uh, prevent things being worse. Um, I haven't got one yet, that said, um, but I do phone a friend that knows the riding area before every trip out, and uh, I make a pre-designated time to call back in when I'm back on deck again, so uh, at least that gives them a time frame. <laughs> So I'm going to call my mate by 1pm, he knows where I'm at, and if, uh, if I'm not back in civilization by that time, he will uh, send out the cavalry. Great spider there. We'll uh, get off. sort that out. Another important point for riding alone: um, take plenty of water and uh, fill yourself up with water before you the day before you ride and leading up to your morning ride. So here in Australia, obviously, heat stress is a, a big issue. Even in colder, normally colder climates, you can still get heat stress. Um, something we learn about in underground mining where I work. And uh, it's a very real and serious issue getting heat stressed. Um, it can very quickly turn into heat stroke, which you do not want. And it can actually be fatal if not well treated quickly. So I was speaking before about uh, the possibility of heat stress and um, you know, leading to heat stroke. Obviously, as I was saying, uh, you, know, you don't want that to occur. 
So some of the signs, uh, these are the ones I can remember, there'll be others, so I'll put some more up here on the screen. But um, uh, profuse sweating, uh, which is actually what I'm doing now. Um, it's not crazy hot, it is very humid, but I'm sweating like uh, I've just stolen something. Um, elevated heart rate, uh, well above normal exercise rates, um, which is also something that I'm doing, <laughs> uh, coincidentally. Um, other signs can be uh, anger, like you're getting angry for no particular reason. Yes, we're frustrated we're riding a bike, but you know, normally that doesn't make you want to kill the bike and set fire to it and do all those sort of things. Some people it does, but yeah, that's one other sign. Uh, I've had heat stress underground and I was just incredibly angry and I couldn't work out why, and then I realized that uh, I was heat stressed. Um, some of the later stages of heat stress, uh, you may stop sweating completely. Uh, that's your body's way of telling you that things are going really bad and it's saving the water that it's got left for your vital organs. And um, at that point, it's very, very dangerous. Um, you sweat to cool down. Once you stop sweating, you're not cooling down any longer. So uh, that's a very dangerous condition and it's to be treated as such. Um, you need to be cooled, not frozen. You know, don't throw yourself in an ice river or whatever, but cooled with water on the outside of your body. and taking sips of water over a longer period of time, uh, you know, mouthfuls at a time, and then uh, having a break from those, not gorging two litres in one go. Uh, you'll just be sick, and then that won't do you any good at all. But um, those are some of the things. I'm not a medical doctor. I do have first aid training for mining. Um, but, yeah, those are some of the signs that you can keep in the back, in the back of your mind while you're riding. Um, yeah, I'll keep an eye on your mates. They may not be aware that they're in heat stress. Um, and when you get to that point, then, you know, obviously you're not thinking rationally any longer and you're not thinking about looking after your body. So uh, keep an eye on your mates if you're riding in a group and some guy's lying on the ground and he's not sweating and he's not speaking, you know, sensible thoughts. He may not have hit his head, he may have, but he may be suffering heat stress and you need to cool him down, get him in the shade, get his hot clothing off him. Um, you know, strip him down to his jocks if you have to. Um, one of my sons had heat stress one time. We lay him on the gravel in the creek and splashed a bit of creek water on him and cooled him down, gave him some drink and uh, he cooled down and we got him back. So um, yeah, once you get over the point from heat stress to, where, to what the medical uh, association call heat stroke, coming back from there is very, very difficult indeed. Um, your body starts to shut down your organs and um, yeah, to, uh, to come back from that is rarer rather than more common. So uh, yeah, keep an eye on yourselves, keep an eye on your mates. So even though I couldn't find somebody to ride with today, today was the day that I could ride. Got some uh, weekend stuff to do with the family and a little bit of time off the bike following that. So today was my day. So those things in mind and my brain in my head not in my backpack I'll uh, have a good day just checking out some of the tracks we ride and uh, checking how things are and here's a good example right here so uh, yeah she's uh, pretty churned up 